We're going live. Da, we are live again. Hello. 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 We are alive still. Still? We are alive. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Let's see if we can get a hold of Mr. Tony Williams and see how he's doing out there in the world. I'm not. I don't end up doing a ton of background use. Like background research? Hey, Tony. How are you doing, sir? Can you hear me? Is it the way I'm set up? I'm in. Tony, can you hear me? Oh, oh, that's what it was. It says missed call. I'll try again real quick. There we go. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Oh, did not answer though. We're running into a little bit of timing issue with the phones. That's interesting. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see what we can pull off one more time. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Is that you, Tony? Hello. Hello. There hey. we go. How are you doing this morning, sir? I'm doing great. Sorry, it took me a minute. I had to turn on my microphone and all of that. I didn't know that. Uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. You sound good. So how are you? Where you know what? It dawns on me. So I like to kind of come into it a little blind, but not overly. So I've read some of the stuff because I wanted. You know, I love being attached to the blues harmonica. Being attached to you're an artist, photography. To the, you seem like a man driven by those things. Where are you from, sir? I'm born and raised in New York City. Big Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Love New York. Tony, this this is my producer Ross. I'm Matt. Hey. Hi, Hi Ross. Hi, Matt. It's a it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Now, Ross is that Ross has been a bit of a New York kid at a point along the way, briefly. Yeah, I lived I lived there for about a year. So you you've been there your whole life? Well, except Yeah, I was born and raised in New York City. I was born in Manhattan, uh East 64th Street, up the east side. Okay. Oh wow, okay. I was, okay. I was raised in the Bronx. Uh I went from Manhattan from Harlem cuz we moved to Harlem. Uh I think I was in kindergarten we moved to Harlem. And I went to elementary school in Harlem for it's for the, up to the second grade. Okay. Then I moved to the Bronx, and I lived in the Bronx until I was thirteen. Then I moved to Brooklyn. So you you been you been around in each borough? I've been around most of the boroughs, but I know the city like the back of my head. <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. And I knew the city by the, like the back of my head by the time I was nine years old. Running. Yeah. There you go. Owning those streets. <laughs> oh, well, in, in the Bronx, I, oh, I did, in Harlem, I lived on 127th Street in Lenox. Okay. Uh, there, I lived down the street from the, uh, what used to be, I don't know if it still is, the Boys Choir of Harlem used to have a uh, elementary school that they converted into a community center. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right on 127th Street. I used to go to that school. The kindergarten. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you My... you've you've been around the block a couple times. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, so uh, yeah, I lived in a one room tenement at that time. Four of us lived in one room. Oh wow! I don't. Know, so this is this is early sixties. This is before you turned thirteen. Is that's when you turned thirteen? No, this is when I was in the kindergarten. So oh, I was kindergarten. Like... I'm sorry. I was, uh, We've been I going all night. <laughs> I remember being there from three years old till I was like maybe seven, six or seven. It's, it's crazy that you said that you knew New York by the back, like by the back of your hand, 
uh like the back of your hands by the age of about of about nine my cousin told me about it takes about 10 years of being in new york before you can claim that you're a new yorker at all right <laughs> so you got the numbers that well, you yeah. got so well here's the thing here's the thing i we were poor so i was always out there with my brother we tried to make a hustle mm -hmm. <laughs> got a hustle we sold newspapers on 125th street in Atlantic, right on the corner uh, I was three years old. Oh, my mom said you went to college. My brother my... was the one that was supposed to be selling newspapers, but because I was so cute, people would buy all of my papers. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Well, and um, he got hit by a taxi right oh, across the street. Oh, jeez. Uh, we, he, you know, he was running to sell a paper, and uh, did, I guess the cab didn't see him, and he got hit by a cab. I had to run home and tell mom, you know, you imagine how that felt. Oh, oof. And right there on 125th Street also used to be the New York Age Building. I don't know if you ever hear, heard of that. The New York Age Building? Yes, the New York Age. It, oh, it I was don't a, know that one. I it was an African-American newspaper. Oh. Like the African. Back back in this was I guess this was like 1956, 1957. Oh wow! Something like that. Uh, the yeah. beginning of a movement. Uh, the beginning of a movement. Yeah, well they they had papers in Chicago, Atlanta, and several other places, but this one was in New York. It was called the New York Age. Okay. And I saw uh, we sold papers right on that corner. And, and that's the papers we sold, the New York Age. The New York Age. But, and, you, uh, but you lost your brother on that corner, you're saying? No, I didn't lose him. Oh, he just got he hit. He got hit by a car, but I, he survived. Oh, that, and I that story got better. On that, I did see a death on that corner. Somebody jumped off the New York Age building and splattered themselves on the sidewalk. I Whoa. saw that at oh, the age geez. of four. At the age of four. <laughs> Man, Jeez, man, that's, that's a young life. age to be seeing that. That's life in your that's... face, right? Well, or death in your face. Well, they yeah, yeah, they tried to pick him up. He was like a wet rag, man. Oh, man. Uh, everything broken. Oh yeah, yeah. that's yeah. That's an, such an interesting Humpty Dumpty, man. Yeah, right. That's that's yeah, such this a... was this was this was like when Harlem was was pumping, man. Harlem was when Harlem was Harlem. Harlem was Harlem. Man. Yeah, when Harlem was Harlem back yeah, then. Yeah, before you know? I was alive. <laughs> yep, yep, and Times Square was still red. Yep, there you go. Yeah, well, <laughs> there you, you go. know what? I, I, I actually marked cars and sold them on, on Times Square. Oh, no way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I lived that, This is what I lived in Cody Island. Okay. Uh, I met this mafioso guy. Right. And that's what he did. He, he bought cars and took them down there. He showed me how to reseal the package. How to mark them, how to reseal the package, put them back in the box, <laughs> just do it by case. Just do it by the case. Mm -hmm. oh. and, and, then, and then we'd take them down there, and he would have me, because you couldn't park on, uh, uh, on 42nd Street. So he would have me run into the, the store and give them, uh, you know, nobody was exchanged, but he would give me, have me give them the, uh, the card. Okay. And by that time, I was like, maybe, I'm going to say, 13, 14. Right. So, yeah. you, you're so you were running, you were running you were pretty heavy. Hustling and running about, from day one. Yeah. Yeah, I was a hustler. You, you have to be. We were very poor. So <laughs> if I didn't hustle, I wouldn't have anything. <laughs> I, right. I, I, you know what? It's funny. We spent the day. So we're, we're kind of, we're doing a twenty. We're doing twenty four hours straight, which is part of the reason. If the questions go off, just help me. If we sound a little, if we oh, sound yeah. a little off, off kilter, it's because we we've been on here a minute. We st so one of the things we really believe in here is hearing the stories. So like we started off tonight. Well, yeah, at midnight we started in Kenya with a young man that was uh, sings about his experience there. And then we moved to a buddy of mine in, well, we moved to my brother in California, and then a buddy in Australia, and then a guy in London, and then uh, a nine-year-old. <laughs> now we're up to New York. And now we're up to New York. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. So, as you're coming up, you're 13, 14 years old, you know, we're talking late 60s at that point, is that right? 
Yeah, well, by the time I moved to Brooklyn, it was the 60s. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's... it's... It was the 60s. No, when I was in the Bronx, it was the 60s. Okay. Okay. Uh, the because, 60s are a crazy yeah, was... time across the country. Yeah. It was the 60s while I was in the Bronx. Yeah. I know when, the 60s. When, when I moved to the Bronx, I was in the, I was in the second grade. So, uh, yeah, it was the 60s. I actually went to PS. 168 or 160 i mean i don't know ps 132 or 168 street were you saying Bronx. ross that well i was saying that i i had seen some documentaries about new york in the 60s and it wasn't too hot back then or it was, sorry it was it was pretty hot back then it was pretty some things was going on and stuff like that in the city well it was it was during the time of uh you know uh revolution it was during the war the Vietnam, it was during, you know, there was a whole lot going yeah. on. You're right. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know. Well, uh, how many, but I, how many I, major I, assassinations I give, in a decade? I would go back to that time in a heartbeat, man. I love it. <laughs> Hippie girls, man. Hippie girls. <laughs> well, yeah. Love was free. <laughs> Brother, I, love. I knew love was your free <laughs> back then. And the drugs were good. Long hair, short hair, different. Anyway, <laughs> that was before. That was before. You know, everything got contaminated. Everything got Why? confused. You know? what? No, contaminated. That there was a good time, and then saying. the '80s were a bad time. All of a sudden, people were dry, <laughs> right. dying. Right. Yeah. The '70s were good too. Right. Did you ever hit Studio Fifty Four? Huh? You ever you like down? There was all, that whole party scene in the seventies in New York. Oh yeah, is... yeah. Uh, we we actually, my friend and I, we we did some stuff back in the day. But <laughs> one thing we did do, we did we busted a party. You know how you go to a party that you're not invited to? Oh sure. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're right? talking about. Right, I know what you're yeah. talking we, about. We we used to do that. We busted a party in a penthouse in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> we just showed up. We and we went up in the elevator with everybody else, right? Hey, the drinks are free. And, I'm and, staying. And they didn't ask us anything. We just walked in with everybody else, like, "Hi, how y'all doing?" <laughs> and, uh, we busted the party. We had a good time. They threw us out eventually. Hey, eventually. Eventually, you see, they threw us out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I can tell they you like, guys stories like, for uh, days. Uh, excuse me, did you have an invitation? We were like, mm-hmm. no. <laughs> no, nope, we just noticed you were going. <laughs> we just noticed everybody. We just followed the crowd. You know? Looked like the place to be. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, I I experienced Woodstock in the 70s. Oh, I, I mean, the 60s. 60, 60 right. I, I experienced uh, a Randall's Island concert. Who did you see? Did you so did you so go to Woodstock? You... I went to Woodstock. Wait. I saw I was there for three days. I also went oh. Red Dollar concert. I was there for three days. Oh my oh gosh. Oh my god. Uh, the only one now the only one could verify this is my friend who lives in Hempstead, New York now. Ah, I know him. Uh, do you, the only do you one remember could verify what you saw? this, but I'm getting ready to tell you. Okay. Right. Okay. I played the harmonica with Ian Anderson from Just for Toll. Oh my God! And, and the three guys from uh, Grand Fuck Railroad. Oh! Back then they didn't have any security or anything. We walked through the locker rooms. <laughs> Just go the hang island. out. <laughs> and oh. they were there back there. They were back there waiting to go on stage, and we were like, "Okay." And I got my heart to be staying with you. <laughs> oh man. So you just you just grabbed the instrument and just started jamming, huh? You just hit your heart and, and go. They were okay with it. They, they had they had the guitar. They didn't have the amp. They had the guitar. The drummer had his stick. Uh, right. Oh my uh, god. The other guy had his bass, but they did, he didn't play the bass. They he did, they did try to strum some chords on the guitar, but I was jamming. Hey. And, don't uh, take that brown. Was, don't take he, the brown ass. Ian Anderson. First of all, let me tell you about Ian Anderson. I didn't understand a word he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he, he was like, but it was, you know, he had that Irish. Oh, he, he's got a brogue. It's hard. To, yeah, he's still. I, I couldn't understand a word. He's still, so still alive, living this. in a little coastal town. He's like, he still lives just in a quiet life, doing his I, thing. Yeah, I just faked it, told him to play his 
play his flute. And he started playing his flute. That oh. damn boy. Yeah. Dude. Just to be next to that flute. You know? Yeah. Oh, that's the oh. man. I, 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 there, I can't I get there. over the fact that you and, played and, at but, Woodstock. But my friend, like, I'm, my mind day, is my blown. I verify it. Because he was there. We were the only two in there. And he could verify that. We, we, and then we spent the night. Oh, we had so much fun, man. <laughs> God, that's we what life's beach about. Parties when I lived in Cody Island. <laughs> we used to beach parties all the time. So, what do you do for I went to Barkway to your high. I went to Lincoln. Oh. Were you saying something about your mom said something? Yeah, uh, the the Harlem Boys Choir, something about that. Uh, no, I said I said the the Harlem Boys Choir used to be in that school in Harlem where where I went to elementary school. Where you went to elementary okay. school? Yeah, my where mom, I went to I went to kindergarten, my, in first grade. My mom was saying that uh, my grandmother went to school with the guy who started it. Or something. Oh, it the was. Guy it was. Oh, the kind of something related. related. Yeah, okay. it was somewhat oh, okay. related. I, missed, yeah. I thought. Oh. I thought. It was, I thought it was more related. Yeah, he, I he thought looked it was, up, and at first yeah. we thought he was about right. That his mom was saying that you'd gone to school with one of his family in yeah, New York. We we're I like, thought oh, that. And I oh, no, no. it didn't go there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I found out later in life because I worked at a place where I was in charge of the drill team. Oh, okay. So I took the drill team up there for a parade or something. I forgot what it was, and. We met at the, the the school that I went to as in kindergarten. Isn't that always an amazing feeling as you kind of yes, walk back? Yes, it was so small. <laughs> what amazed me was I didn't realize. I was like, at first, I didn't recognize it. I, you know, and I was like, it's too familiar, you know. Right. And then, right. uh, and then I, when I came outside, I said, wait a minute. I lived right up the street, 127th Street. And, uh. And I said, this is the elementary school I went to. But oh, it's, every, the water fountain, everything was so tiny. Everything was so small. <laughs> Perspective. And, <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> because I was brutal. So where, where's Mark Twain at? Where's Mark that Twain at? Mark Cody Island. Coney Island. Island, okay. Mark Twain's one See, of them. I, I don't know too much about Coney Island. I went to two 600 schools, too. <laughs> you know what okay. a 600 school What's is. a 600 school? Does that mean you were a pain in the ass? Is that what a 600 that, school? Yeah, that's what it meant. <laughs> hey, yeah, something just told me. I think where Tony was told. going. Something told me. I was playing for the bad kids. But I, I, I was very intelligent. It was just that I couldn't focus. I couldn't stay on who was thing. I get but, that. Uh, mm. Yeah, I get that. You know how you finish your work and then the teacher say you got to be quiet and wait for the rest of the class? Not your specialty, that I take worked it. For me. <laughs> that never worked for me. So, so I would get kicked out of the class, get kicked out of the school. I went to uh, PS 166 on Jerome Avenue in the Bronx. Right. For sixth grade. That's where I pulled the knife for the teacher. <laughs> had it coming. I swear I had it coming. No, I'm just kidding. That's, but that's when they, they sent me to 600 school in sixth grade. Well, so just out of interest, what, what had this poor teacher done that caused you to feel the need? <laughs> It was one of those wait for the rest of the class. And then when I couldn't wait, and I I wanted to do my own thing, like dance on the desk or something. Right. The teacher, the teacher wanted to put me out of the class, and I was pissed off at him. Oof! You said you were staying. <laughs> yeah, like throw me out. <laughs> and you, you know, all, you know, you, you grow up in in in, in uh, the Bronx. You carry a knife with you all the time, anyway. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was in the sixth grade, but I can't. I had my blade. <laughs> I was in the sixth grade, but, but I, I had, had my blade. blade. That's a go. rap. That's a rap that's, line hey, right there. Listen, I might have but to put you that know, in the song. I turned things around late in life, so I'm so grateful for that because oh. I would have been dead or in jail if I had kept up what I was doing. So what? What did you end up doing? Well. It's a long story, man. I don't know if you're ready for that. I don't know if I can do all of it. What do you think of is the way you make your work? What do you? How do you? How do you work out there in the world? Well, these days. Well, you... I, for for over twenty some years, I was a, in employment development. Wow. Oh. I developed a pre-employment program. I wrote the curriculum and everything okay. here in Maryland, in Baltimore. Oh, so you then? Where are you? Where are you living at now these days? I'm in Baltimore. Now you're down in Baltimore. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, you this know is where my mother this is where my mother is from. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so you you went back to where your family's from? 
Well, there was a reason for that. Okay. okay. That's why I said it's a long story. No, go, go ahead. Right, the, go the, ahead. The reason why I came to Baltimore, uh, I, okay, when I, at the age of 16, my mother's relatives who lived in Baltimore at okay. the time wanted to contact her because her father was dying, my grandfather. Okay. Mm. And he was asking for her. She had left Baltimore when my brother and sister were children because they wanted, her relatives wanted to take the children away from her because my mother was handicapped and they always oh. wanted, didn't believe that she could take care of her own children. Okay. Oh, wow. So she, she bought it up. I mean, I guess she had a bag. Uh, she put everything and just left. She got on the Greyhound, went to New York. Oh, wow. That's why we were poor. Well, okay. but because because she had she's, to get out. Well, no, but because she, she stood up for her, yeah, for her she, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She started with nothing. Right. That's powerful. So we, we so that's why we all four of us lived in a one room tenement okay. when I was in kindergarten. Oh wow! But, uh, yeah, we lived in one room. We used to put our our, our eggs and milk on the windowsill to keep it cold. Cause, you know, you put it in the refrigerator, and other people get it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody so, steal it. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. You, you, she said, "Get the milk off, off the, so you can have your cereal. Get the milk off the window so. <laughs> Right? Because you don't want to put it in that common refrigerator, man. Everybody, it be gone before you get there. Exactly. You won't have no milk. You won't have no won't milk if you no put it milk. in the common room. That's for sure. Oh yeah. man. So, so, so uh. Where was I? Oh, you were telling me that your mom had left home because they weren't gonna... Yeah, so my mom, yeah. So my mom had left home. And my grand, her grandfather was died. This was 1968, I believe. Oh, okay, okay. I was like 16. And uh, so they wanted, so they, they hired a private investigator to find her. To find her. They found my mother, uh -huh. contacted her. And told her about her father, but by the time they contacted her, or found her, uh -huh. uh, her father had passed. Wow, okay. So we, we went down to Baltimore for the first time at the age of 16 to go to, go to my grandfather's funeral. Go to the funeral. Right. Go, the, right. The man you'd never met, but to put him exactly. in the ground. Exactly. So okay. as of today, all those relatives have passed away. All of them are gone. Yes. My mother survived all of them. She oh. passed when she was 90 in 2013. She, she lived survived there. all of them. I think she had that coming. I think that's yes. fair. I think yes. that's fair. I think that's <laughs> yes. fair. Except I still have two cousins left. I had two male cousins who passed away, but that's when I decided I wanted to move to Baltimore because I liked my two cousins. Male cousins, we clicked like friends. Okay, I got you. I got you. So I'm your, I kept I'm coming down like here on my own after uh, that to, to hang out with my cousins. Okay, so you you started. It felt good to build some of that bond. Yeah, I, I, and yeah. we hung out together. We were cool. We uh, we hung out together, went to parties. We did a lot of good stuff. And then I went to I went to Navy sometime later, and I oh, said wow. to myself, well, when I get out of the Navy. And I, if I get married, I want to, well, I was already married when I went to Navy. I want to, I want to move to uh, Baltimore. That's what I said to myself. Okay. Because okay. I thought Baltimore was a nice little town and I wanted to be with my cousin, hang out with him, regular. Right. So when I moved back to Baltimore, when I moved to Baltimore, eventually my cousins passed away. One died of a heart attack. The other one died tragically. He was working on a car and car fell on him oh man ah that's yeah. no way no that's 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 so, yeah so i missed both of them but those are the two cousins that i moved the ball of for to go and be close to it. so are you still close to your other siblings my other two my siblings i'm very close to oh, okay okay my, my, my cousins okay that live in Baltimore. i have two female cousins that live in Baltimore with friendly but we're not really close but you're not tight right i got you yeah, I, I know how that goes I don't know them that well you know what i mean right right 
that isn't it interesting because I, I it's funny that as much as our family's family there are family you bond with yeah there, sometimes you'll, you'll you'll find sometimes you can have family you don't it, I, I don't mean that they're bad or anything like that. i mean but you there's a click sometimes there's some family there's some family exactly. that you just get you get that special well, bond with i had you know i yeah. was 16 my cousins were in their 20s oh okay someone to look up and, to yeah I felt great hanging out with them because I was like, I'm hanging out with the big boy. You hanging yeah. out with the big boy, yeah. I, I know that, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm riding feeling. tall But I was there. always yeah. tall for my age. If you looked at that picture I sent you when I was on the carousel. You're, yeah, you're not a, I was, you're not a little I guy. I was 13 in that picture. Oh, jeez. Wait, what? I was always six four, six. From the age of 13 up, I think I was 6'2". Dang man, That's six crazy. two from thirteen. So I was always tall, and I could pass for older than what I was. Isn't it an so advantage? So when I went out with my cousins, they never made an excuse for me. I, you know, I said to my sixteen year old cousin, they never said that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so. I, I was one of those. I started oh shaving in like I don't know sixth grade. You know what I mean? And I, so I, I was the one they'd always ask to go get beer. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know how that goes. You got a beard. Um, you we're gonna have you. <laughs> I know. See, you look older like that, right? Yeah. And the funny thing is, I've lucked out because, like, all the way through my teen years, and like up into being, you know, my early twenties, I kind of looked mid thirties. But then I passed my mid thirties. And I just held. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like permanently stuck at like. Well, I did the opposite. I was never. I, I I couldn't shave until I was like twenty two, and I didn't, I didn't really need to shave then. I went to Navy, and when I went to Navy, they made you shave. Right, can't have none of that. We got, I didn't have have nothing on my face, maybe some peach fuzz, <laughs> and they had they made you shave, and then that that's when I started growing hair on my face. Oh, that's so funny. I was so, 22. I looked like I was 12, but I was 22. So but, how, uh, how old? How old? Like what years would that have been? Like then in the that Navy? was in the 70s. That was that was like 73, 72. Oof. Oh, okay. Now where where did you end up serving? Oh, I, I I went to Great Lakes, Illinois for boot camp. I went to San Diego, California for a school. I went, I was, became a radio man. Oh, okay. Then I went to Panama Canal Zone. There you go. Panama Canal Zone. Then I came home. Like, the man, a plan, Panama. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it down there. I, you know what? I've all, That's a place I've always wanted to see. Like, I traveled to Asia some. Um, Not that time. It, it wasn't the 70s. It was a little later. Uh, it was the late 80s, 89, 90. And I, it's... That there's something about cultures where it's that warm. I think that there's a you got to relax, you got to occasionally take a siesta, you got to live life at the pace of the heat. You you're not gonna beat the heat. The heat's gonna win. Yeah, the closest I got was the deep south. They're pretty. They're pretty good about knowing how to chill out because you gotta you gotta know that it could get really 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 hot really 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 fast. Right. So you gotta chill out a little bit. You know, give me some water on your head every once in a while. Yeah. What do you, so I think we kind of covered work and play. You know what? I always, well, I like to I ask, worked out, you know, but go the ahead. work is, is, my work was vast. You, you be sound, at ADHD, be at ADHD like I am, I have many talents. So I did work in employment development most of my life, but all of that time I also was a photographer. I also was a title insurance producer. I also was a notary public. I also was uh, a uh, I, I I I taught auto body repair and painting as a vocational instructor oh, wow. for almost ten years. So you were you you tended to want to taste life. You tended to not want to just do one thing. Would it, would it sounds like that you no, always... I do a lot of different things. I, yeah. I'm bored. Out of board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's what it, I, I, it seems that way. It's like, I, I you know, right now I, I got four projects going on right here. You're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, and that's what I'm saying. It's always like that with me. 
Oh, we're like that. I, I'll be honest. Yep. Projects that, going and going. That has going. worked. We're trying to get this nonprofit off the ground. That really, our whole concept is behind the idea of. We think if people could hear each other better, I don't know, they'd be better to each other. They'd see each other better. You know that there's something to be said about people being able to raise their voices up in a way that other people can hear them, as opposed to controlled space. Like I don't think. We talk a lot here about the idea that we don't think record labels are necessary anymore. You know, that we have the ability to, you know, bring together music, bring together musicians, do podcasts, do interviews, create music in a way that we can create a place where people can feel like they can make noise and be heard, you know? Yes. It, it's, it, I, because I think it's the most, I think it's the most, it's the, it's the thing I can do that I think has an effect. As odd as, you know, that as simple as it sounds, just going, hey, have you met my friends? You know, and just keep adding until everybody's, you know, hey, have I met, you know, oh, you're already my friend. <laughs> I, I know you. Yeah, hey, I know you. It's Tony. <laughs> it's Tony, yeah. So we're, where are you guys from? Well, we're in, uh, I'm in Columbus, Ohio. But now I mean, we moved around. We're both in Columbus, Ohio. Yep. Okay. Um, I started off in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and then went back and forth. But shoot, about a year ago, I this has become my mission to see other people's perspectives, you know, to to try and see the world through other eyes, if you will. I I think it's uh, a I I think it's like amazing. I I constantly find new things about myself. Even as I'm learning about other people, you kind of like get this perspective thing going, and you're like wait a minute, I know how that relates to me. Like, so, you've been around a minute. What do you love in this world, brother? What do, what do, you, what do, you, what do, you, what do you find meaning in? What I find, say that again? Well, meaning, or what do you love? Oh, I love, I love music. Mm. I love photography, <laughs> as you can see. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, I love, uh, I love just being free. Like, okay, I'm, I'm divorced. So I, I, <laughs> free at last, I, free at last. <laughs> my, my, myself, my ex and myself are very, 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 very good friends. Oh, wow, that's that's perfect. I think that's important. Most people can't figure that out. And I've always said, wait a minute, you've got to remember, this was a person you liked. There was a reason why you thought. You know what I mean? And most people will just throw it all away. And I'm like, oh, that's bullshit. You guys still get along. Yes. We, we're, 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 we're the best of friends, actually. I, it's such, it's a powerful thing for some people to just have the ability to go, you know, I think you're awesome. I love you. This isn't working. Well, is, <laughs> I'm not a fight. I don't have time in my life to fight with you. Mm. So even if we disagree, I'd rather cut you loose than argue with you. Because you're just losing time to the argument. Yeah. Exactly. I don't, and I, being at ADHD, I feel like time is important. So I'm not going to waste my time arguing with anybody. And you yep. know, back in the day, we used to fight. Hmm. I walk up to you and hit you with a, a, a baseball bat before I even said anything to you. Well, shoot Do you up. Ever... So, so and I'm just saying, I don't argue. Do you ever it's feel like the world the moves too slow? If you go to if you go to fight, you go to fight. You don't need to argue. That's to, yeah. If you're gonna fight, you gotta fight. Yeah. And show up to fight. Not show like up to fight. Not like you half in and half out. It ain't. Uh, That's what I'm saying. We don't need to go chest to chest and all of that. That's a waste of time. Yeah. It, it and if I'm going to fight, and I think you're going to come after me. I'm gonna get you first. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's honest. what we learned yeah. in the Bronx. That's what well, it's, on, it's what it's what you learn nah, coming up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You I'm better, you gonna, better get or you get you. got. Like I'm not gonna be the guy that says, "Stay right there, stay right there." I'm going, I'll be right <laughs> stay back. Stay right there. I'll I'm be not right gonna back. be that guy. Hold on, I'm gonna get a bat. No, I'm coming with no, the bat. I already bat. have the I bat. I got the bat already. <laughs> and you? I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm just gonna hit you with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need the key. What, what, what's the point of an argument? <laughs> That's a, you know what. That's, That's a true. good point. That's a good point. You know what? What is the point if, of an if argument? If I decide I'm going to see, I'm not valid anymore. 
Right. But if I decided I wanted to beat somebody up, I'm not going to go argue with him. I'm just going to go beat him up. <laughs> it's a man you with a plan. Do that. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> we never did that. We just argued. Do you, you ever, know? Do you ever feel like the world moves too slow? Yes. Okay. It feels like it feels like I'm the Flash and everybody else is standing still sometimes. <laughs> 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 oh man, that's beautiful. It does because, like, I'm you know, before somebody even gets up in the morning, I probably did about six, seven things that they wouldn't even dream of doing. But uh, that's powerful. So you're still like, so you're very motivated to. You just it, it doesn't stop. There, there isn't a place where you go. Okay, I'm. That's enough. Here. No, I take a break. I take breaks. I, I, you know, I get tired. You know, just like anybody else. Amen. And I might sleep longer, over, uh, over sleep. You know, I mean, everybody, uh, you know, your body has its own control. You know that, right? right? Yeah. Your body says, you better rest. You know, you better rest. Hey, Ross, so, Ross is nodding off right now. Dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm just no. saying, those, those are things you can't control. So eventually, you're going you go to rest, whether or not you have to. Nah, your body, your body, your body got body ways body. of telling you, like, hey, hey, bonehead, you need to sleep. <laughs> exactly. Like, right. Or you just need to rest, not necessarily sleep, but you need to break. Nah, I could, I could relate. I could relate to what you were saying about like the world. The, sometimes you feel like you're Flash, and and the world is just moving too slow. Like when I when I was a lot younger, I, I had a really hard time like paying attention. Like just my attention span was just so small. You know, I could you know. I couldn't I, I I really just couldn't pay attention sometimes. Like and that was before they had what they call ADHD because back then they call it hyperactivity. Mm. Mm. Just beat it out of the kids. And, uh, Put them in a so six hundred school. They considered me hyperactive. The, then later on they renamed it ADHD what attention it, deficit hyperactivity disorder well you need you need to do something that's more more active and that's that's a lot better for for learning yeah i don't i don't you, like to sit around a lot yeah you know tell me what pro but what, what even, projects you're the, working the, on right now. my brain is working so oh. if i'm working on pictures i could i could focus mm. that you need that so, sounds like I'll a follow you. Run, right no no i i actually get no, that, that makes totally sense. that a lot of times like if i'm it helps like yeah if i've got something i'm working on that i can be working on as opposed to if i'm kind of at loose ends trying to get a, a like at the first end of a project as opposed to when you've got some better steps laid out almost you know that i can be a little i've got five projects started and then eventually okay this one you focus on enough to get done you know what i mean like i'm constantly right. planning right. the other pieces and ten but you know, I I've gotten so good at this that sometimes I do three or four projects. I'll finish them all at the same time. Uh, amen. <laughs> you know what? No, you know, <laughs> no, nah, that's yeah. Rhythm so, and melody, in, man. In words, Rhythm and melody. In other yes. words, I work on all of them at the same time with the same kind of progression until all of them are done. That's the way that I it's, work it's sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes one project. It's simpler to do than the other, and you can do it quicker. Well, sometimes, sometimes one project will get going, and then and then it'll slow down, and then I'm like, all right, let me move on to the then next one. Why this one? Exactly. exactly. Let me let me move on to the next one while that one's working in the background. And that's why we right. keep then fighting for back finished to that music. Other one. <laughs> you keep yeah, just like if I'm, I'm editing some video, I'll mm. do some editing. Yep. I'll do some rendering. And, and while that's I'll, rendering, while that's, I'll do something while that's else. While working, yeah. I'll go do something else. Yep. Well, yeah, you got to do something while the washer's running, you, you know? know? Yeah. <laughs> My computer don't be too happy at me when I do that, but. Well, the funny thing I is, know, but... Ross will get right <laughs> to the end of finishing a song, and that's well, when it gets harder. Is, I'm a computer... My advantage is that I'm a computer technician, too. Oh, okay. So See, I have more than one computer. You got the keys then, man. I have more than one computer that I might be doing different projects on. Oh, well, there you go. So you okay, got them all moving. Okay, so you got, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's pretty smart. That's the way I need to be doing it. So, yeah, because like I went when I thought we were going to do Zoom today, mm. I went down to my iMac, which is in my ba my office down. Okay, okay, okay. I went to my iMac, but I don't usually use the iMac. I don't really like that computer. I, you know uh, what? I use. Go ahead. My Windows computer more. 
Only because I'm used to it more. I, 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 I agree. I think it's gotten to the point where whichever one you, you use the most, there's available exactly. software. I can get it done on Windows. As much as my mom loves her Mac. Right. I know. I, I hate going and up trying to figure out how to make it work. Like, I haven't worked with People Windows. that like Mac don't really know much about computers. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> truth bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? That's my they, they know how to use the Mac. They know how to use the Mac, right? But they don't yeah. know much about computers. I find I find that most computer people know how to use Mac and Win Windows, though. Like if they're I real computer people, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's what he was saying. They know right? how to use both. Yeah. Most people that own a Mac don't necessarily know much about computers. They know how to operate their back. Right, they, right, right. They but they don't know much money. about computers how they work. <laughs> they know how to spend money. They definitely know how to spend <laughs> money. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Can I get that in blue? No. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, well, yeah. for a while, they were pushing out IMAX in cute colors. And they like, were colors, right. Right, no, right. Yeah. Oh, what a great deal. I bought mine because it's pink. That's, hey. that's not how computers work. <laughs> yeah, I know. But before that, they they, they were like a little box. Mm. Remember? Do you, no. you know you don't remember the first? Uh, no, I told uh, Apple computer. We had one. My dad was an Apple nut. Yeah, they were just don't like a wrong. little box, right? Yeah, the tiny the the one when remember, and then Bloom County had the Banana Junior in the cartoons. They right. called it the it Banana like Junior because they were making fun of the Apple, and he, the little computer, walk around in the cartoon. <laughs> I know that they they they, they grew so much. I they, mean, I, I remember when they first came out, and all the schools would get them. Yeah, that was Apple's yeah. move. They had like a, a monopoly on the schools. That's how they got in. Now look around, Chrome's. Yeah, that's what Google's doing. With the right. pandemic, man, they got so many right. Chromebooks Google, in those yeah, schools. Those, those Google Chromebooks. Uh, 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 they're the pit. <laughs> the, 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 the shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I did get my yeah, wife. They're, they're cheap, and people will buy them because they're cheap. But then when you look at what you got, it's like, oh my god, did I really buy this piece of junk? Oh, dude. And the worst was, so we had, I had, we had kids here going to school. Not, not last year, but the year before. So they all had these crappy Chromebooks that you had to fight with. <laughs> And I know the, the teacher. I mean, the teachers were doing their all, best. You can't, you can't just download anything on them, right? You can't install your own software. It's a uh, it's a weird setup. Yeah, it's not well. I know they 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 make it so you only can do what they want you to do. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. You have no control. You want you want uh, now that we're knocking them. You want to see one that's that Amazon tablet. You try and use that Amazon tablet to do anything other oh, than I, Amazon. I wouldn't even buy you... an Amazon tablet. No. Have... <laughs> I, he said, I don't I, even you know I what have those. one tablet. I have an Acer Transformer. Yeah, That's Acer nice. is the way to go with tablets, I think. Well, you got to realize I love that thing. Acer's a major manufacturer of all the parts that are building all of your other computers. Mm. The, yeah, Acer's, Acer's just a way to go. But, right. It's, hey, why it's don't a way to go with a generic HP. Yeah. Can I right exactly? <laughs> can I can I get it just with the you know the barcode thing on it? I don't need the don't fancy need... label. Right, right. That's all it is. It's generic HP. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And a Toshiba is a generic Dell. Right. Yeah. Well, they they bought them all up. So I was in for years. I was in uh, asset recovery. I'd go around all over east of the Mississippi. I'd go. Town to town, up and down the dial. No, not WKRP. Um, I would consolidate and pick up computer equipment. So, yeah, no. Every model known to man, I've stacked on a pallet somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the worst was... Well, I've, I've worked with computers since 1980. You know, I, I may have been not working on computers at that point. Cause, okay, so I was born in 71. Yeah, you were. So, so yeah. You, were about, you were about nine. Elementary school kid, <laughs> right? Right. You were about nine. Yeah, 1980. I was. I was in college. Though so I'll tell you what, we were serious about it. We got um, the first computer we got. Do you remember that TI 99? It was a good. Yeah. It what for a personal computer when it first came out, you could program on it. It had some games, and then the next computer we did was I spent big money. 
because I didn't have a an Atari 64. I spent the money for the uh, the 130 XE. I had the official. I had 120. Did you, did you I had, had 128 drive? K. No, I I had 128 K. That was the difference. <laughs> uh, no, did it have a hard drive? I think that one did. I think that one did. Because okay. I remember because my dad would use it because then my parents started using it for their uh, Quicken for. I you still have my first man? Do you really? Yes. Guess what it was. What was it? A Tandy What's Out. Oh, you know it, baby. Radio Shack. <laughs> Radio Shack all day long. Remember when Radio Shack was a cool I got place? Radio Shack because you could get it. You could get it on credit. Right. That was and right because they I pushed the pay Tandy more hard. Than that thing was worth. I'm sure I paid more than it was worth, but. I, that Tandy 1000 didn't have a hard drive. When mm. I bought it, it had 32K of memory. Right? I upgraded it to 64. <laughs> Living large. <laughs> and when modems came out, I attached a, a modem to it. It was like a 10... 1080. 10, or whatever. Yeah, it was, it was real slow. It was, I, it was slow. <laughs> as, there was 600, 300, yeah, but, you 600, know, no, 1800. It, the internet, there was... No, the internet, Bulletin boards. Black, we had was the, a black screen. We had those B, those BBSs where we would just th those post boards. Because by the time exactly. I was a teenager, we had, yeah, we, we'd have to just we go do the. I had a sub board on the BBS. <laughs> yeah, I had a sub board uh, for the longest on that BBS called Ragga World. Oh, nice. And nice. uh, uh, I had uh. I had followers. I had people in there that would that would. It was just like, but it was no pictures. It was right. No, I, all, I, I, it was all text. I, I was there, yeah. brother. That uh, by the time I'm 13 or 14, I had a modem. So you're talking, yeah, or mid 80s, and yeah, yeah, no BBSs were. A th I I ran around as. It was a thing. I, that, I, that, I, they I was have, Rasputin. They, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, they had the you had the internet, but you didn't have the internet the way it looks today. <laughs> it, 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 it's a totally different like it, it, so my brother and, 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 and your motive was the dialogue oh absolutely and you know what and then, and then somebody call if you had call waiting your parents would get call waiting because if oh, it came no. through you it had pop to you off yeah or it pop you off it, it, they'd be yeah. like oh what the well there, there's a method we used to use to disable call waiting up straight <laughs> star 67 or something like, something that. like that it was star something and then you're yeah. like were you on that modem <laughs> now you had yeah. your own modem at that point and they couldn't interrupt when I, you did that we i'll tell you what brother we have got to talk more hey i want to shoot some music you know ross wants to talk to you about music i want to talk to you more about all of it one last we kind of jumped around with the questions and and played with it but give us one so it, after all your time on the planet, why do you feel like you're here? I have no idea. But I like that know, answer. <laughs> that, that's all I can say. I'm grateful that I'm here. Amen. I'm Maybe with it you. was because I had to bring a daughter into the world. Mm. Maybe that's why I'm here. It's uh, meaningful. Well, I'm here to do the things I do for charity and, and different things like that that I do. And maybe for all those that uh, hundreds of kids that I taught over the years, maybe it was for that. All of that. See, I think all of that's meaningful. I think. Yes. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I started teaching. I started teaching when I was uh, uh, after the Navy, when I was a, a vocational, I mean, a uh, auto body manager. I managed the shop. So I, I taught okay. people then. And then after cutting myself on the job, mm. I decided I wanted to get, you know, become a, a vocational instructor. So I took, you know, went to college and then I became a vocational instructor a couple of years later and uh, teaching on the body repair and painting for thousands, hundreds of students. And uh, I, that's when I became a drill team commander also. Oh, that's so I had I had over 400 some students go through my drill team program in addition to my shop teaching. Then I became a uh, coordinator of career services to develop that pre-employment program. And I did that for almost 20 years. So uh, maybe that's why I was born. I, you know, or, I don't know. Or all of it. 
or all of it. It could be all of the yeah. above, you know? You know? Maybe you never know. make people happy with my music. I don't know. You know, this, make people happy with the pictures I take of them. What I, you know, so I, I like know. to think of it as it's not the ducats we stack, it's the ripples we leave. You know what right. I mean? The lives we touch. And here's, a, here's a quote that I made back in the 80s. What there you go. Quote, a pebble barely disturbs water, but it does. But it does. Ooh. I, I, you know what's funny? What I tell people, like, so I run in circles where they talk about my pond is so still. You know, like, they're all about their still Your pond. Your pond is so still until a rock comes in there. Throw a pebble in it. Mess it, it up. Yep. Well, the, they'll be, I, I'll say, you throw a big rock in it, it's going to splash. Yep. You're going to get ripples. But if you measure that pond, it's just a little bit bigger from the experience. Yep. Right. Right. We're right. on it. We are on the same wavelength, Man, brother. But sometimes been... you don't have time or the resources to to throw boulders in. Right. So a, a pebble, pebble. Right. pebble will move it. Yeah, I exactly. got you. I got you. And if you ever use that call, please put my name under it. <laughs> uh, no, it's a real. That's that, I that's like a it. quote I never heard anybody else say but me. You're the man, Tony. And we're a gonna... pebble barely disturbs water. But, but it, it does. does. Yep. But it does. Tony. Make sure I'm make sure to remember that quote. I am writing it now, Tony. Good job. Because, good, good because you could drop a pebble and, and, and just it's sort of like planting a seed in somebody's mm, head. Yeah, I see what you're you saying. You don't need to give them the whole story. You just need to plant that seed. Give them a little pebble. Give them a little nugget. And it will yeah. Just ripple the water. Yeah. I, you know what? God, you know what? I love the part where, like, well, I, I love, like I said, man, I love seeing perspectives. Man, it's been amazing talking to you and just hearing about your life experiences. I, I want it. We got to do this. We got to do this hey, look, again, we got, man. We got a lot more to talk about. Right, I got right. A lot more to talk about. I, I'm I with you, tell. brother. I, I can tell. I can tell, and I want it. Yo. Cool. I can tell you how I was a 5 percenter. I can tell you about Whoa. Uh, uh, we'll, yeah, I can tell you a whole lot. We'll stuff. go there. <laughs> I can tell you how uh, Jed, my friend Jed and I, who she was at that concert with me, oh, wow. uh, how we came back to, to Cody Island on the subway. And by the time we got back to Stillwell Avenue, we tried to figure out, are you high? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we looked at each other. We said, no. And I said, we should be. We should be, right? In other words, <laughs> We got so high that we were straight. We but got so high we were down. We got so high we weren't high. It, it was it was amazing. <laughs> no, I'm serious. We had done so much stuff. By the time we got back to Cody Island, I looked at him. He said, he said, no. I was like, no. Said, we should be right. He said, yeah. Look at all the stuff we did. I'm a I'm a I'm a plead to fifth and concur on the basis that I might relate to that statement. <laughs> But I mean, you know, I can tell you about beach parties. I can tell you how it was a, 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 a street performer on the boardwalk. Oh, man. We're, I tell I you what, man, we got some stories, boardwalk. man. I want to get the other thing I want to do is stories. I want to get some harmonica for, for the, the guys to put together some beats around, too. That kind of stuff. Do you I, record Do you record your harmonica stuff? There's, I've got a recording. Got recording. Yeah, I, I've I, got a SoundCloud. I, I you, I, I, I'm going to send you a, a blues song that I did. But you know what? I'm, yeah. not, much of a singer. I'm not much of a singer. I would love I would love to be able to sample some of your stuff. Well, so we'll we'll talk I about did that. Send you, I did send you a video. Okay. I've got I've got it. What it is is I've got it on one end and he hasn't seen it yet. I've, okay. I've, we've been running in circles this week is what it is, Tony. <laughs> I got and, and, and to that I have several more songs that I have videotaped. Oh and, send and I have some that I recorded. As send well. them, man. Send them over. We we love that. We yeah. In in the end, you know what? Yeah, we're here for the music. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the day. You know what? It's it's hard to not have grown up when I did it not want your own pirate radio station. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, what? You say that again? It's hard to not well that it's hard to, to grow up, you know, what I did and not want my own pirate radio station. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, getting ready to send you one now. Oh. Absolutely I'm perfect, ready brother. To send you a sound. I'm getting ready to send you a sound clip. Ooh, thank you. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to wrap it up for today, and then we'll get a hold of you again, brother. Sound good? All right, we'll do that. Thank
Thank you, Tony. Man, awesome. Thank you. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate oh, it. Do you remember Red House by Jimi Hendrix? I do. Okay. I sent you Red House by Birch. Oh. oh. I can't wait. It's right there on your on your uh, message.